birthday shout out to the best president uh, in the land, President Ono. And then just so thankful for our seniors, uh, what they've done here. You know, right now, a 51 and 8 record. Uh, just awesome to be a part of their growth and their maturation as young men and, and players. And uh, just so happy for them to get their you know, last one here in the big house. So, questions? Starting the right with Chris. Coach, what was the key to the, the second half? success on the ground and then the line played uh, what was the improvement there that you saw uh, I thought we did a good job formationally adjusting and helping the box runs you know sometimes you get a lot of people in the box and it's hard to run and some formations dictate that they can and some formations dictate that they can't and um, I also thought the guys just moved the guys more and uh, we did a really good job fundamentally played with lower hats better hands and Kala obviously got it got it going really early you know uh, with a huge run so I think that momentum was great and then the last drive of the, the first half, just talk about how important that was to get momentum in those middle eight like you always talk about. Yeah, it was awesome. It was great to, it was great to see. It was great for our defense um, to get a, get a stop, hold, and then for our offense to go down and score. So uh, it was a huge part and, and great momentum shifting into the second half. Uh, last Tom. Sharon, uh, when you look at the two-week, bye-week prep, what were the things you worked on that uh, obviously result in the six-point output today, which is – much higher, obviously, twenty more than uh, your highest point total early in the year. I mean, we we really locked into the little things. We called it buy and week. Again, I said that was Max Bredesen's idea. I'm not going to take take the credit for that. So, I thought all the guys did a really good job of you know doing the little things and, and attacking it. And it really started that Monday. We had a a scout team uh, practice, and it was probably the most energetic practice, um, especially on a Monday we've had. And then coming in after a loss. For those guys to be like that and, and to buy in like that meant a lot. It talks about the culture and where, where these guys are and where we are. So uh, they just worked on the little things. And then this week they, they practiced really well with a lot of energy. Um, so it was fun to be a part of. On the right, Mike, yep. Coach, uh, you know, like you said, the offense hadn't scored more than 30 in a game. You got to 50 today. How big is that going into the Ohio State game? Yeah, great momentum. Great momentum. Uh, but. We all know what that game means. You know, it's a reset. It doesn't really matter what your record is. It doesn't really matter what you've done before. That game's different. So uh, we got to go prepare. On the left, Steve. Sure. What are the most important things that, that Davis Warren did to improve this year and touch on his accomplishments? I mean, just uh, what a selfless guy first, because, you know, when you get when you get a starter and you get benched, you could easily have a selfless negative attitude and he was the complete opposite he was an outstanding teammate and he just a tireless worker his process never changed and and continued to get better and uh, be a great you know example of what you want you know for a kid that's been through so much in his life to he's just a great example he's a great example for me he's a great example for our team uh, just because you get knocked down or you're put in a position that uh, doesn't mean you stop you stop working and uh, he's been outstanding for us in the middle charlie Sharon, all year you guys have talked about needing just a little bit more execution or just a little bit more consistency. Today, really offensively, defensively, and even on special teams, it seems like you guys put it all together. Would you say this was your most complete game of the year? Yeah, I mean, I would say so, for sure. Um, obviously, the point totals will say so, and, and the stats on defense, we had eight tackles for loss, six sacks, I think 25 guys had tackles on offense, putting up 50 points <clears> and being balanced over 200 yards you know, rushing and almost 200 yards passing. So, uh, yeah, I'd say complete for sure. And you know, you always want to peak towards the end of your season, but especially with Ohio State, do you feel like you're peaking right now, and is it the right time to do so? Yeah, always the right time to do it when you got to go play those guys. Angelique, uh, Sharon Colson <coughs> had touched on uh, late in the, in the first half and didn't come back in the second half. What is his status? Yeah, just working through something. So we'll see what what they say when, uh, when we go see the doctors. And also on Jair, he had the, the jersey switch and didn't play till late in the game. What was what was the reasoning for that? Yeah, just something we're doing internally. We're working through internally. In the middle, Tommy. Yep, uh, Shrum, obviously, big game next week. Uh, a lot of people always call the, the week before that trap game or trap spot. And then there's a lot going on around the program right mm -hmm. now, obviously. It could have been easy to, to maybe overlook this. How were you guys able to, to I mean, not just stay focused, but yeah, because it's the next game. It's another opportunity. It was senior day is last game in the big house. There's so many reasons. Uh, bowl eligibility. There's so many reasons that it was easy for our guys to just keep attacking. And like I said before, another opportunity to put on that helmet and, and jersey. So uh, never can we ever think that any game is a trap game or overlook anybody, especially when you're at Michigan. Austin.